Hey, good evening, boys and girls. Ross, WRNC 518 slash WD4EHU. Uh, this is a brand new project. I had put all the projects aside since I'm having uh, health issues. And uh, like that old saying, when it rains, it pours, everything is coming in at once. So I'm trying to, I'm trying to deal with it, but I got a... Uh, a uh, message from this gentleman, Patrick Harley, who resides in, uh, I believe in Lexington, South Carolina. Huh, why does Lexington, South Carolina sound so familiar to me? Anyway, uh, so he asked me, uh, he was impressed with my videos on YouTube and he uh, chose me as the person to build his system. So basically, this is the uh, the actual repeater. It's already finished, ready to go. I'm only mixing the duplexer, which is still at the repeater site. I'm gonna bring her down 200 to 462, 600 and 467, 600. I'll do a video on that performance. As you know, uh, you guys know my videos usually show the build first and then the actual performance of the system once it's all completed at sort of turnkey operation. Uh, he already received a, a simplex node, high power simplex node, where he actually uh, did some testing and he's getting like, according to him, he's getting like 60 miles coverage. So that's great. And uh, the next thing going out is this particular repeater. And I believe he has four other sites where he's going to be, um, we're going to be uh, building uh, a total of four nodes and they're going to be um, located uh, in different parts of the city uh, just as receivers. So the dead areas uh, would be, uh, the reception will be increased by these particular nodes uh, strategically uh, uh, installed in the particular areas. I'm not familiar with the area, so I can't, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, I cannot make any comments on that. But anyway, uh, so basically at the end will be one repeater and four receivers spread throughout the city uh, to increase the coverage. Obviously the repeater is going to be at the highest tower, so that's going to be the main transmitter. I personally like uh, uh, TXRX nodes because if there is a dead area uh, that will happen that the repeater's transmitter is not reaching and you're very close to that particular node uh, that will transmit close to you and that would allow the uh, stronger signal to uh, be received by your equipment but it's a matter of choice but anyway, she's finished. Uh, let me get to the equipment. As usually, I use Motorola's MCS 2000 radios, the only radio of choice for me. Uh, that's the uh, receiver. Here's the uh, transmitter. And here is the, uh, the cabling. Uh, this is the transmitter radio. And this is a... Um, <clears throat> Excuse me, a Masters Communications RL20 sound card. I love these things. I buy them in a kit form. Since I can still see, I can still solder. And each one comes into the sound card, the receiver and the transmitter. Now this particular radio, it's on the proper position because the receiver uh, doesn't need to be cooled down. So this one is in its upright position. But this particular radio uh, does need to be cooled down because of the uh, transmitter side. So there's the heat sink. With a, it's on the bottom of the radio, so it has to be inverted. And here's the fan. I already tested this particular unit. Uh, 20 minutes of 50 watt continuous. And the uh, heat sink only got warm. So I mean, this thing can run for a while. Especially during nets which they usually continues. All right, let's uh, turn this thing around a little bit. Uh, this is the uh, back of the repeater. 
there is the fan. Uh, here's the sound card connected to the Raspberry Pi via USB, as is commonly done. Uh, this is the back of the radio. Here's the uh, RG142 uh, high quality uh, uh, RF cable. And there is a DC cable and the data cable. Everything is labeled. This is the 50 amp switching power supply. And now here we have, well I had it running a little while ago so I put a dummy load on it. I don't like running uh, high power, put that aside. I don't like running high power without a uh, dummy load on it. And as you can see here, this is the power supply. There, oh, get out of the way. Anyway, that's the AC fan uh, lines, the uh, AC uh, supply on the bottom, the negative and positive DC cords to each radio. And the fan is mounted on, uh, uh, I like putting this uh, angle brackets because that way the air is forced downward towards the heat sink. And I tried this many ways and this is the best way that it works. A lot of the times uh, I use, let me get the fan so you'll see it. <laughs> a lot of the times I use this fan, this is, this is a monster. <clears throat> in that case I will have to vertically mount the radio so the heat sink here could be facing this way and then the fan will be facing that way as it as it shows there and then this one blows I think it's uh, 300 CFMs or something like that but this particular fan only runs I think it's 80 maybe anyway I'll do a video uh, one next time I get the uh, duplexers tuned so you'll see the performance. I already know what it does because I already tested it but I'm not going to divulge that until the complete system is up and running sort of turnkey. Alright guys it's a pleasure uh, doing this. Uh, hope you, I hope you enjoy my video. Happy 4th of July. Let's give thanks uh, to those who made the ultimate sacrifice so that we could, we could be playing with little radios and enjoying freedom. 73's, have a great one.